In this demonstration, we are going to take a look at the new Heidelberg Press Console interface that was released with Shots version 5.1. This is all based on the Heidelberg Press. When the simulator opens up, the press room screen appears along with the copy desk. We're running this on a one monitor configuration, so the two windows are going to have to overlap and exist on the same monitor. A dual monitor configuration is recommend, recommended and the copy desk would typically be kept on the right side monitor. The left monitor would display the press room and the various windows associated with the press console. As the mouse moves over the different parts of the press, they are highlighted. These can be selected and a schematic diagram will open showing the different uh, components or subsystems within that. And as the mouse moves over these different subsystems, they're highlighted. They can be selected and a series of menus appears that enables the student to evaluate and diagnose print problems. I've selected the blanket cylinder. In the first menu are the different parts of that subsystem that are available for analysis and checking. If I select the blanket, the next menu lists the different items that can be checked and if I check blanket surface clean which would be a common problem I can go down to the check button and it'll tell me down in the dialog window whether the blanket is clean or not and it says yes it's clean we're running in the perfect press room mode so there are no print faults currently with this with the uh, printing press the next menu is the actions menu where we can fix a problem make adjustments, corrections. Notice there is a cost and also a time associated with some of the different actions. If the action involves consumables of some type, there will be a cost associated with them. And there will also be a, a time penalty or a time assessed with that action. All this information is recorded in the trace file, which is a student log that lists the actions that the student took and at the end of the trace file is a summary that has the cost for the job. There is an hourly cost for the press and an hourly material cost plus any uh, actions that the student took that had a cost associated with them would be assessed to the uh, overall cost and the virtual time will calculate the actual time that it took the student to run the job based on the different time penalties that were access, assessed for the actions a student took. If a student solves a job, solves a problem very quickly and efficiently, um, his virtual time will be similar to his actual running time, whereas a student that would make uh, several wrong checks, his virtual time would be significantly higher and potentially his costs would be higher. If we wanted to clean the blanket, we simply pick clean surface actions and in the dialog box it tells us we just cleaned the blanket. We could go back and check and see if it is clean had it, had it been dirty. So each part of the press has this window that will open up with different components that can be checked. Here's the feeder head. Notice that the mouse has turned red when we go over the feeder head. This is an indication that there's multimedia present. The instructor in the trainer module can customize the simulator by putting multimedia in with the different components of the press. This is very good for putting in uh, your own training information, your own standard operating procedures. Uh, any media that is supported by Windows, videos, PDFs, Word files can all be inserted in here. If we right click on the feeder head, the list of multimedia appears and we have a video in here showing the feeder head running on our press. There is an air conditioner unit. We can change the relative humidity in the press room. If we make the humidity significantly out of specification, the sheets will become wrinkled and even dog-eared in, in the delivery. In order to get to the main control panel, we go to the central console and click on it and the window opens up showing us our main control panel. Once we have 
exited the press room, we have our main control panel showing up with our production buttons. Uh, this button, when pushed twice, starts the press, and this is a this is modeled uh, directly from the Heidelberg console. These are our feeder switches off, feeder off, and we use these buttons to shut down the press, compressor off, and our stop button. We have our good counter button up here. In order to end most of the exercises, the student must have solved all the problems, have no print fault, and be able to keep good sheets. The counter will activate, and a message will come up alerting the student that the exercise is over. If he does not have, if he still has print faults and selects a button, a warning message will appear alerting him that he has not solved the problems yet. There are a number of other control menus here. Um, in this particular window, we have our various on-off switches, uh, impression off and on. These are the impression cylinder press pressures that would be controlled here. Our ink vibrators can be turned off and on, inking rollers, dampening rollers, etc. This is one of the main control windows with the various ink profiles for the uh, fountains simply by selecting. Notice we have the fine-tune key here. Within each of these course settings, there are this many fine-tuning settings, and this is modeled exactly after the Heidelberg console. We can turn the fine-tuning off and on. Our inking and dampening controls, our overall controls for the, the sweep and the fountain pan speeds are controlled from this window. We simply select the color we want, and in this, this is the overall ink feed, the pan roller speed. We can turn them up and turn them down. This is our register window, and the press has to be idling or moving to be able to move the units. We select the printing unit. We have the ability to make circumferential and lateral moves, and we can also cock or skew the plate to uh, compensate for a crooked plate or a crooked image. These are the main screens that are in the Heidelberg press console. Next, we're going to go back and start the press from the main control panel. We hit the production button twice. There normally is audio with this. It has a warning bell sound and also the sound of the press running so you can tell that the press is actually running. We're going to go to the copy desk and at the top here we select this option and we pull a sheet and our sheet appears. We have the ability to compare it to a proof side to side. We also have the ability to zoom in on each corner of the sheet to do more critical comparison. So one of the first steps, just like in a normal production run, is that the trainee would select the option to view the proof and see if he can identify what the print, print problem would happen to be. Some of the other tools that are available would be the magnifying glass where we can check the fit. If I go back to the register and say I kick the cyan out a little bit, we come back to our copy board and we'll pull a sheet. We can go back with our glass now and see that the image has shifted and that we are out of register. There's also a handheld manual densitometer. You can check density, trapping, and dot gain. Typically, you would select a quarter view in that you take all the measurements from the color bar that's at the back of the sheet. The density and dot gain references are all programmable, or the, uh, they're, they're done in the trainer module. We have our scanning densitometer that will show us the densities across the entire sheet. The number here represents our reference densities. And these are the actual ink key densities. In the trainer man module, there are three different papers that you can choose from, matte, uncoated, and, and glossy. And each type of paper has its own uh, density profile. So the instructor can go in and put in whatever reference densities he wants for those three different types of paper. Depending on whatever paper is chosen in the exercise, that will be the reference densities that appear in the exercise. There is a spectrophotometer if you are using a spectrophotometer and you can actually measure delta E with this. 
uh, the reference densities are in green from the proof and our current or the, actually the LAB readings are in green and the LAB readings are in red for the actual press sheet. There is a gloss meter. The gloss meter will simply tell you if gloss is present or not. There's a, a couple of, there's at least one job that has gloss or aqueous coating. Um, the aqueous coating is really not one of the main components of the simulator. Next we ought to go back and uh, take a look at our diagnostics down here. And if we check our print faults, it tells us we have a fitting error. If we would happen to go back to the main control panel and turn the counter on, we get a warning window telling the student to pay attention. Your print copy is bad. You have to correct the print faults. Had there been no print fault, the exercise would have ended. And most exercises end with a screen telling you you solved the exercise. Do you want to exit? This would be very similar to getting an OK sheet. If we wanted to go back and fix our register, since I moved this out, I know how far off it is. I can go right back and do it. Pull another sheet. We can check our fit. And it looks good. If we go check our print faults, we see that there's no print fault. Go back to the main control panel. We turn the counter on, and the good count starts. And had this been an exercise, we would typically have seen the window open up um, telling us we have solved the exercise and we can exit the simulator. This is a very quick overview of the simulator. The, there is going to be another demonstration video as to solving a simple, simple exercise. Thank you for your time.